Hi everybody, and welcome back to Matt Talks Geek and Makes Bad Orc. Um, so, it's been a couple of weeks since last I was actually uh, on here. Um, a lot of stuff has happened, uh, you know, life gets in the way. You guys all, we all have lives outside of, well, everything. Um, actually kind of glad that it took me this long because I had actually recorded... Um, a pretty terrible one. I just wasn't really happy with it, and it was uh, a Harry Potter rant. Um, frankly, I wasn't really pleased. Potter's not as popular as he once was, uh, mainly due to a lot of the controversy surrounding the author. Um, but ultimately, uh, I, I'm glad that I took this long. And I'm going to tell you why. Because now we are three episodes uh, into Loki. Well, four by the time you beat this. Um, but we're, we're at the halfway point. And there's a lot of uh, uh, revelations that's happened, and I hope on the next next week um, I'll be able to... Um, well, not next week. I, I, I want to revisit Loki after the next three episodes. Um, so it's going to be in a couple of weeks. Um, but we're going to go ahead and discuss this, and um, instead of drawing Loki, because I just don't think I can do the character uh, justice, this is going to be another shameless self-promotion one, I'm going to be drawing um, a fairly new character that I have created uh, named Barbara Black Sheep, literally named because I needed something that sounded like Bob on a Black Sheep, without actually being the words Bob. Um... Originally, the idea in my head was just some fan Sonic character, and the first time I drew her was very much Sonic style. Uh, I have since refined her a few times. If you follow my Facebook, if you're on that friends list, uh, you've probably seen me post her. Um, I'm definitely going to do something else with her in the future, so I'm just going to get into this uh, while I talk about um, Loki. And uh, again, as always, spoilers will be ahead. I This is your one and final warning. You hadn't seen up to at least episode three of Loki. Stop watching. Unless, of course, you don't care about spoilers, in which case, happy to have you aboard. All right, let's get into this. So, you know, honestly speaking, um, when we start talking about the Loki show, I was actually a little, um, I was actually kind of, I wasn't sure how I felt about it, um, mostly because it's like, what can you really do? And then, obviously, we first heard about a Loki show, uh, if I'm not mistaken, I, I think we first heard about a Loki show um, post-Infinity War, but we hadn't actually seen Endgame yet. So, it was kind of like, well, how's Loki going to do his own show, you know, if he's dead? Because the last thing we saw was... Loki, you know, getting his neck snapped by uh, Thanos, and so I was kind of, you know, um, confused, you know, what's what's going on there, and then, of course, there was the infamous scene in Endgame, <laughs> where the botched theft of the Tesseract um, ultimately leads to Loki escaping um, custody of the Avengers. And then, and then it kind of became, became clear to anybody who was paying attention, that's obviously how they're going to do a Loki show. Um, and then, of course, the first teaser trailer dropped, and we saw that it was like, you know, the time variance authority. Something I actually was not um, horrendously familiar with, um, with comic lore. So I was a little kind of underwhelmed by that, but at the same time, I was excited because... So, like... Something about me is I wish I could um, enjoy uh, a lot of movies the way average moviegoers do without the knowledge of the source material. Because oftentimes, the knowledge of the source material leads to me nitpicking it. Well, you know, they didn't do this right, they didn't do that right. And even if I'm not nitpicking it, you know, I, I, I have to know where it's going. Um, and so, while it's still cool to see a lot of my favorite stories on screen, um, you know, the, the, the surprise isn't there. One of the reasons why I was actually quite 
uh, thrilled about the um, Adrian Toomes uh, being um, Liz's father in in a Spider-Man um, uh, Homecoming. Uh, because, you know, as much as I am a Spider-Man purist, and anybody who knows me knows I am a Spider-Man purist. It's one of the reasons why I haven't watched a Venom. Uh, I'm just really kind of in the idea how you do a Venom movie without Spider-Man being part of its origin. But, but, um, I absolutely love the changes that are made in the MCU. Um, so, um, so, so again, I, it goes back to, you know, I, I do enjoy actually being surprised. Um, and so the time, with the Time Variant Authority, the Time Variant Authority, I, I had no clue what I was getting into. I uh, did a little bit of wiki reading, and I mean, it seemed all right. It didn't seem like the comics uh, really used them to their full effect that they could have, but then again, they did. <sighs> Well, I'm not really sure where we'd be standing, um, story-wise. Anyway, so I have no clue what's going on with those guys, uh, or even if knowledge of the comic would help, um, because as we've seen with a lot of the MCU, uh, even if you do have knowledge of the comic, that doesn't always mean you know what's happening. So, with that in mind, I plunged into Loki. You know, the first little trailer was neat, wasn't really sure what's going on here. I don't keep up with a lot of the, oh, so-and-so posted on their Instagram, so it's like, you know, they telling us something. I don't keep up with that. No clue. I saw some article tonight about how this guy is going to be possibly playing, um, um, not how her ear looks, possibly playing, uh, old Loki, and, you know, maybe he's, um, you know, actually um, controlling the, um, the the TVA. Um, I don't know. Don't know. Maybe he is, but I don't even know that he teased a, an appearance on his Instagram because I, like, I don't follow that stuff. All right. So what I do follow, though, is the show itself, which I got to say um, has been tremendously uh, just a, a, a lovely, fun ride for anyone who's been for anyone new and anyone who has been um, keeping up with the MCU. And I got to say, so first episode starts off with a bang. Um, obviously, it recaps with Avengers footage. And a, a, a lot of uh, review sites kind of got um, a little nasty with their reviews, saying that, oh, the premiere relies too heavily on stock footage. And it's like, guys, that's, that's kind of the point. You know, we needed find a way to break Loki and and him seeing what his life would become or not become as as it were as he witnesses his own death we they had to find a way to break Loki had to if they hadn't um there wouldn't really be much of a show because Loki's got to figure out that a lot to say. He has to. And so, you know, a lot of people poke fun at, or even anger at, you know, the whole uh, drawer. There, there's a scene in the first episode where he's trying the Tesseract back, which apparently has uh, no power in the TVA, much like Loki has no power in the TVA. His power just doesn't work. And when they open the drawer to give him the Tesseract back, uh, this, this worker named Casey, who is... Um, his role so far has been humorous. Um, he, he also reveals this box full of infinity stones. And of course, that's really the first breaking point for Loki um, is that he's in a place where, you know, they just have a drawer full of infinity stones and the office personnel there uh, use them as, uh, as Casey said, paperweights. So it's like, what really matters at that point? And then he goes and looks at his he goes and looks at his death and it's kind of, there's actually somebody made a good point on post about that is that Loki's file didn't end as soon as his next snap Loki's file ended sometime after Thor had wept over uh, Loki's body meaning Loki's last memory and that's 
timeline were his brother's tears over his death. Um, which is kind of moving, really. Um, but then you get to see Avengers, the first Avengers Loki. Very much not prepared to see that. He, he He's still very much on his I, I am a god uh, uh, you know, high and, and I, I think between that and seeing the, the the Infinity Stones just literally costume jewelry in the hands of the TVA finally made him realize, you know, I, I'm dealing with some serious power here. And, and even if I did break free, what would happen? I would go back to a timeline where I die because my entire existence is just so other people can become the best versions of themselves. I mean, how depressing is that? So, obviously, he concocts a plan. I mean, he's Loki. We, we didn't really think he turned good guy, did we? Did none of y'all... I mean, and he might still do good things, but it's still Loki. Um, so, he decides to help them track down this variant, which, according to Mobius, played by Owen Wilson, wow, um, is him. So that's kind of neat. All right, so that, that's where we that's where we leave off, you know. And I'm I'm just I'm just you know, oh my god, really? All right, cool. Loki versus Loki. You know, we can get a little glimpse of hooded Loki. I honestly did not see any. Uh, I didn't even like. I saw the actress in the trailer, but it just did not dawn on me. You know, I was I was thinking, you know, just some other Asgardian maybe. I'm not even sure what I was thinking. I just know it didn't dawn on me that that was actually going to be the Loki variant. And it was. And that was the coolest thing. As part of the, 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 the second episode is, you know, it's neat watching Loki um, have to actually, you know, uh, work on uh, clues, mysteries. He figures out that, uh, you know, he's hiding in uh, apocalypses because, of course, why not? doesn't matter what you do as long as there are no survivors like there was supposed to be then the timeline remains intact uh, with a very funny very 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 funny um, analogy using Owen Wilson's um, salad as a as, as props for it it was kind of funny because um, and, and Owen Wilson's just such a good actor and he's just um, really just playing up this role absolutely absolutely love it uh, everything about the show, the whole cast, everything. So, um, they go to Pompeii to test the theory, which, I mean, why not, you know? Um, Pompeii is an apocalypse event that everyone's aware of. Uh, you know, it doesn't... <clears throat> you're you're going to be hard-pressed to find someone, especially in this day and age, who wouldn't have been aware of where they were um, when watching the episode. So, that was well done. And then, um, once they tested the theory that the time variant energy doesn't appear if you mess with things in apocalypse settings, uh, they, they decide to start looking around for the most likely area for, um, the most likely area for, um, variant Loki to be hidden. And this is another point where I think the show really did well, because it would have been really easy for the writers to have made use of an actual horrific event um, that has happened in the recent uh, history uh, of our world. Um, and then, you know, most specifically, you know, Marvel and Disney are located in the United States, so... Uh, of, 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 of my home country, um, how easy would it have been for them to have made use of Hurricane Katrina, um, you know, or even gone back further to older hurricanes and done like Camille, um, but they didn't. They didn't, and I'm glad they did because I, I feel as though that would have been um, like disrespectful to you know victims, especially since they're still family um, of the victims of those of those events. 
that are alive. Uh, and it just, I, I, I think it would have been, um, just would have been kind of uh, in poor taste uh, to have used actual, um, weird, I swear the pencil a little better, to have used an actual, um, event. So instead, what they did was made up an event. And it was a plausible event. It was the uh, South, Alabama, if I'm not mistaken. And it was a hurricane that just wipes out a bunch of people who decided they were going to ride it out in a shelter uh, in a um, megastore called uh, Rock's Cart, which I'm sure everybody caught, anyone who's a Marvel fan, I'm sure, caught the Rock's on, um, connection there. I mean, it's, it's Marvel. Marvel, Rock's on. I mean, they, they might as well have called it, you know, had he survived the events of, um, of, uh, Endgame, I mean, they could have very well called it, you know, Stark, Stark Mark or something. Um, but, so it's a nice little nod to the fans. Uh, so again, very well done. And then you get this whole bit right at the right, right, right in the last act, where they're hunting down this variant in Rock's cart, and you start getting a glimpse of the power that this variant has, which seem to differ from Loki. You know, Loki seems to be able to enchant people to a point, but not really. He's really just more of a trickster. This Loki is definitely able to enchant them. Like, she is able to speak through people. At this point, you still don't know she's a she if you have been, you know, dodging spoilers. Um, so it was just a really good build-up to seeing her show up on screen, uh, removing her hood, and, and, and telling them that this isn't about him. Um, you know, and it was just, uh, you know, right after, of course, she does this right after, of course, she uh, just um, reset, charge, bombed the timeline. So now, all these little timeline branches start appearing, and you start wondering, man, how's the TVA going to handle that? And I start thinking, well, they're not, because my first thought with the TVA after Miss Minutes told us about the sacred timeline and how... All these uh, alternate realities were consolidated into one sacred timeline that is now kept in check. I can't help but think, you know, but the TVA can't last, or at least not in this incarnation, past this season. Because the next Doctor Strange is literally titled The Multiverse of Madness. And if you can't, you know, have the slightest variation in, in actions, how could you ever have an entire multiverse? Uh, especially one that is mad. So, obviously right off the bat, I'm just pretty convinced that the TVA is not going to survive this season. And that might be a good thing, um, mostly because of the revelation that happened in episode three, and that's my favorite part, really. You see, Miss Minutes talks about how the Timekeepers created the TVA and created those, and um, that gets uh, somewhat um, corroborated by the fact that when Loki tells Casey in episode one that if he doesn't get the Tesseract, he's going to gut him like a fish, and Casey's like, what's a fish? You know, Loki's like, what do you mean? How, how, how do you not know what a fish is? And he's like, I've, I've been in my, this office, you know, all my life, and I just really want to know, you know, what I'm being, what, what, what are you threatening me with? Um, and so it's kind of like, oh, man, yeah, so these guys just exist here, and that guy apparently doesn't even get to really monitor anything if he doesn't even know what a fish is. And then even Owen Wilson even, you know, reiterates it uh, when he's talking to Mobius that, you know, the timekeepers... Um, built the um, the timekeepers built the, um, the the place and of course they 
created everybody in it. So it's kind of like, okay, this place sucks, but Owen Wilson really, really, for some reason, uh, his character absolutely adores jet skis. And that, that kind of becomes important. Um, as you, if you remember that, because in episode three, which starts out very strangely, uh, the hunter, a hunter that was, uh, taken hostage during, um, the events of episode two, it's suddenly at the beginning of the episode, and she's talking to the female Loki, who we, we, we later discover her name is, um, Silty, um, and they're in, like, a restaurant, talking about bad food and margaritas. But then things get all weird, and then the time jumps. And then you find out, no, that's real. It's not happening. Sylvia's literally um, messing with her mind. But it's not <clears throat> actually that cut and dry. You see, Sylvie may very well be messing with her mind, but... <clears throat> She reveals later to Loki that her enchantment powers, if it's weak-minded person, um, you know, that's, well, that's, that's easy. But if it's not a weak-minded person, she has to create a, uh, to, to maintain control, she's got to create a, a fantasy from their memory. And it was extremely difficult with the um, TVA agent because she had to go back you know, uh, like over a hundred years to when before she worked for the TVA, which of course, you know, if you were paying attention at that point, your reaction was probably very close to Loki's. What do you, what do you mean before she worked for the TVA? You know, I was told everyone at the TVA was was created there, and she's like, well, that's just just ridiculous. No, they're they're all time variants, and. Um, so, like, that's, that's like, the big, big reveal, and it's like, holy crap, Owen Wilson's Mobius likes jet skis, because, obviously, he was into jet skis, um, you know, in his actual life. And it makes you wonder, you know, why, what, why is he a variant? Is he supposed to die in his timeline in a jet ski accident? Um, and, you know, he survived somehow, and so, so now he's, you know, a variant, um, Obviously, there's there's something nefarious happening um, in the TVA, and and that really just kind of solidified it. You know, there were hints of it throughout, like the whole bit. Miss Minutes just really seemed like you know your your very typical uh, propaganda piece. <clears throat> A lot of things not really making sense in it. Uh, Judge Renslayer seemed very uh, cryptic about, you know, the timekeepers, and of course there's a lot of theories of the timekeepers even real, and obviously in the comics, yes, the timekeepers are real, but, you know, this is this is the MCU, we don't really know uh, what they're going to keep, what they're going to throw out, um, what they're going to alter for the sake of um, a story that you don't see coming. Um, a lot of people are suggesting maybe it's Kang uh, is one of the time lords, or is the only time lord, um, I keep saying time lord, like, you know, David Tennant's about to pop out here. Um, and seriously, where is David Tennant in this whole universe, for God's sakes? Honestly, you know, if if, 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 if I'm being totally honest, and, 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 and if I'm being just absolutely honest, if if I were in Hollywood right now, if I were like an established actor, and not, not even like a background, you know, I mean like a legit established actor, like if I was, um, and let's take somebody who has, if I was, uh, if I was Jason Statham, you know, I'm looking at all these all these movies in, in, in the Marvel Universe, you know. I mean, for God's sakes, uh, with the upcoming, um, with the upcoming, um, Eternals, Angelina Jolie is, uh, is joining the MCU, for crying out loud. I mean, you know, Matt Damon joined the MCU for the sole purpose of, of being in, in Loki's play. For Ragnarok, for crying out loud. I mean, at this point, if I were any actor in Hollywood who has not been in the MCU, I would be calling up my agent at this point saying, why the hell haven't you gotten me a spot here? 
you know, all I can say is I hope they're saving Keanu Reeves for, like, something big, because, um, I just, I can't imagine that, the, you know, there's, there's really any other reason why they haven't, um, why they haven't cast him as anything. So, um, but yeah, so, so, so there you go with Loki. So now, like, I, I'm at a good point, you know, with the, with the, with the, the, the TV series here, because it's like, all the Disney Plus shows so far have been really good, and I've really enjoyed them. Um, you know, and, and I was really kind of, you know, worried. Are we going to go three for three here? <clears throat> and so far, we, you know, Wanda, I'm not going to lie. I was a Wanda naysayer in the first two episodes. They were really hard for me to get through, and they were... Um, I just, I don't know. I'm not sure what I was expecting, um, but I'm glad I stuck with it. I actually had to go back and watch episode one um, a second time because I stopped in the middle of it. I literally, literally stopped. And I just, I, I, I just, like I said, I wasn't sure what exactly I, I was, I thought I was going to be um, getting into. But it wasn't that. It wasn't that. I need a darker blue. Let's go to my <clears throat> lovely hair color file. Whoever made this, by the way, if you're watching this video, I have no clue. There was no credit for this. Um, whoever made this, thank you. You are an artistic god, and 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 you have made color selection for me so easy. So, if you recognize this as your work, can, can you, like, leave me a, a comment about that? Because I am just ever so grateful for your contribution to the artistic world. You know, the world needs more of you and less Anish Kapoor's. Um, let's see here. Okay, so that's good. <clears throat> I do need a darker purple as well. She has two purples. I, I really should have um, thought out my palette more. So, anyway. Uh, is that too close? That's a little too close. Hey, yeah, you guys think that's too close? Way too close. All right, so <clears throat> here we are now speculating what's going to happen. Um, obviously, you know, they got that little uh, teaser bit that came out. So, I'm guessing in the next episode, we're, we're going to get Sylvie's backstory as Loki and Sylvie obviously think they're about to die because they were trying to get off this planet that Loki took them to that apparently is one of the worst apocalypse um, scenarios like you could have ever brought them to. And they tried several bits to, to get off, to get to this ship that's called the Ark that's supposed to um, that is supposed to um, take the citizens of the planet off of the, uh, out, out, you know, out of the, um, what's the word I'm looking for, out of the um, danger zone. They're supposed to get off there. Um, but the, the citizens don't. Sylvie knows that. So they're going to use it to repower their depowered um, um, return device. Like, it really just kind of starts seeming like a you know, fun episode of um, Family Guy where Brian and Stewie are running around and his return pad and his time machine messes up, you know? Really kind of feels like that. Um, <clears throat> and um, let, let's let's just say Loki starts off as Brian but quickly becomes um, uh, Chris Griffin. So <laughs> oh my god. So having said that, um, Having said that, you've got a lovely train sequence. Obviously, that's you know that's that's where they first messed it up. Um, you know, again, this lovely train sequence where they first mess up the uh, the, the planner 
should I say, uh, Loki messes up the plan. Um, to, um, to get off because he's just, well, well, he's an idiot. And... <clears throat> well, he's, yeah, he's an idiot. And, uh, in the show, anyway, he gets drunk. He's, as he says, he's hedonistic. But there, before before he gets drunk, dances, and we get this fun scene where we see, you know, Loki who's not sure what he's doing with himself. Um, you get this nice, like I almost want to call it heartwarming scene of um, almost a little heartwarming scene of uh, you know him and Sylvie talking, and it just kind of becomes. Really, yeah, I suppose that'll work. <clears throat> really, just kind of a little touching. Uh, as Sylvie even mentions, you know, is there, I'm sure, you know, you were a prince. Was there a, a would be princess uh, in your future, you know, in, you know, prospects, you know, or maybe another prince? And of course, you know. Loki says, uh, you know, well, a little bit of both, I imagine, as you're such as yourself. I don't like that. You know, the gradient, I thought I was going to like that. I'm just going to do it. I'm just going to do it for real. <clears throat> um, which, of course, solidifies in canon that Loki is uh, bisexual, which, let's face it, um, anyone who's ever read the comics already knew that. Um, but it is nice that. And a lot of people, you know, are making a big deal about it, you know, and, and, and like, um, and like, uh, you know, chats online. Oh, man, we already knew. We knew. Oh, uh, uh, y'all, you know, read, 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 read mythology. And what they're missing is the fact that it, it's huge, actually, because, yes, comic book readers knew that he was, you know, bisexual, but the typical non-comic reader, you know, the, the, uh, what I call the, uh, the casual fan didn't know that. Um, and I'd say, you know, 10 years ago, we lived in a world where Marvel wouldn't have been as bold as they are to make that openly canon. They would let the, the fans who know, know. I did that wrong. No, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't. That's, that's the purple, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's purple. Um, you know, they let the fans who know know, and 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 then that would have been it. Um, the fact that you can actually, the fact that they actually felt comfortable enough making it, um, canon, open. Not just canon, but like open canon. The fact that they actually did that and felt comfortable enough in doing that you know, speaks volumes to where we have, um, how much we have progressed as a society. Um, so yeah, uh, uh, Marvel fans did know, but it's still a big deal. It's still a big deal. Um, so anyway, I assume with the next episode though, because their their final chance to get off the planet. It, it's gone. Uh, they they do not they, they do not have a good way off the planet. So with that in mind, you figure <clears throat> next episode. Obviously, there's going to be some last minute save. Whether it's something one of them do, or whether Mobius ends up finding them, I'm not really sure. I'm not entirely sure. You know uh, what's really going to happen. I mean, who who really who really knows, right? Um, <clears throat> but I do know that. Okay. I do know that, um, I love it, and shade, and multiply. I do know that, um, they're obviously going to explore her backstory, and I know that because we see, like I said, in a little preview, young Sylvie, so I imagine... We're going to get a good, good, long, just not 
<clears throat> I wouldn't even, there's no such thing as filler episodes with these Disney Plus shows. It all means something. So this isn't just going to be some feel-good trip down memory lane. And that's what I love about it. That is what I absolutely love about it. Is that there's going to be some seriously huge, there's going to be a seriously huge reveal somewhere in that episode. Um, seeing Sylvie's backstory is honestly just going to be like the, um, you know, the, 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 the perk. But there's going to be some huge reveal by the end of it. I just know there is. Uh, and if there isn't, I'm going to be, like, so surprised. So I hope uh, in a couple weeks when we revisit um, this topic that, you know, that I could say, you know, heck yeah, I was right. Um, but I also hope that I am just as, as amazed by what it is uh, to the point where I can just really gout about it with you guys. Um, that looks terrible. So that I can just geek out about it with you guys, and uh, you know, not have to, uh, not have to be like, man, that sucked. Um, anyway, so just so you guys, uh, in case you were wondering, so this is Barbara Black Sheep. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> okay, I need to. Uh, Merge layer. Bam. Okay. Did forget to do a few things with her. So, okay. Um, just in case you guys were wondering. Yeah, Barbara Black Sheep. And, um... <clears throat> um shoot. Sorry, I got thrown off by that old rookie mistake. Um, <clears throat> I'm definitely thinking about using her for my, um, one of my, uh, for like, I'm not going to say her own comic, because I don't really want her for her own comic. I want her as a supplemental character, uh, but to be just as important as the main character, because I still want to use uh, Maxine Denton. I don't know, you know, anyone who follows my art knows who Maxine Denton is at this point. Um, but <clears throat> what I really want is for her to kind of become her own character so that she gets her own comic. Um, she is an assassin, um, you know, uh, so, uh, or at least that was the original idea with an assassin. Um, the going thought right now is definitely going to be some sort of a vigilante. And that's where I kind of want to use her in uh, one of my um, uh, Maxine Denton comics where she's the vigilante, the uh, Citizen Maverick, because she's kind of like, you know, the Batman. I'll, I'll, I'll break your teeth out, you know, give you a three herniated disc and, and, and break your femur, but then I'm going to ask you to talk and, you know, send you to jail and remind you that I don't kill. Um, whereas she's, you know, the vigilante, like, like, I'm not going to say Punisher, because, um, I guess kind of like the Punisher, because, yeah, Punisher gets his information first. So, yeah, she's, she's kind of like Punisher meets Batman, except, um, you know, neither one um, really have, I mean, she's going to have some kind of skill level. Obviously, she's going to have some kind of background. I haven't decided, so I think, you know, obviously some kind of military background, uh, so that she has um, a reason for being trained. And, of course, um, What's her face? Um, uh, you know, Denton is a cop, and she's been a cop for a while, and she's also trained to actually be a uh, vigilante um, with the cops. So it's kind of like that's uh, you know that's the explanation. So there you have it, and um, I will see you guys next week. I'm definitely gonna try to. Um, Continue this on without any large breaks like this last couple weeks. Uh, again, though, good came out of it, and I'll see you guys next time. All right, bye.